Mark chapter 6, verse 45. And straightway he constrained his disciples to get into the ship and to go to the other side before unto Bethsaida while he sent away the people. So he sends the disciples off because the disciples have had it with them. You know, we saw that in Matthew. We saw the attitude. So he's like, all right, you guys get in the boat, head to the other side. I'll take care of things here. And when he had sent them away, he departed into a mountain to pray. And that's twice. Was recorded in, in Mark. And if Jesus Christ prayed, we ought to pray. And when even was come, 6 p.m., the ship was in the midst of the sea, and he alone on the land. So the disciples are out in the sea, in the boat. Jesus is still on the, sh on the shore in the mountain praying. And he saw them toiling and rowing, for the wind was contrary unto them. So there, there's a storm. They're having a hard time. And about the fourth watch of the night, he cometh unto them. Now, the watches are, the first watch of the night is 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. The second watch is 9 p.m. to midnight. The third watch is midnight to 3 a.m. And the fourth watch, watch is 3 a.m. to 6, 6 a.m. So you're about near the end of the night. The sun's about to come up. And it seems like they've been on that, that sea all night. Cometh unto them, walking upon the sea. Now, there are some out there that say that, you know, Jesus was walking on ice. Not in the storm. Jesus is defying gravity. It's a miracle again. And would have passed them, passed by them. So what happened here is, here's the boat, they're toiling, they're in a storm, they're having a hard time. Jesus is walking to the other side. He's not walking to the boat. And this is the scene that we've seen with the men to Emmaus. They're about to walk into the, into the house. He's about to keep walking by. Jesus is not going to invite himself. And in the last scene, church age, he's knocking on the door. He's not going to come in unless he's wanted. And that's going to remind you with the church age today is, listen, Jesus is not going to come in your life. Jesus is not going to come in your church. Jesus is not going to do anything if you do not invite him. He'll keep walking on by. All the people that we read about in Matthew, you know, they called out to him. He would just kept going. So he would have passed by them. He was keeping them going. But when they saw him walking on the sea, right, there's 12 of them. This is not one in the middle of the night. This, this is 12 men in a boat. And they see Jesus walking on the sea. You could take it to a courtroom and establish proper court would have to say, okay, it happened. They suppose it had been a spirit and cried out. It's a ghost. They inspect Jesus. They inspect Jesus to be walking on the sea. They didn't think he would walk on the sea. So when they look out, they say, you know, here are fishermen. And they've got tales of, of ghosts and spirits. We've had a few where, where I was a lobsterman. Now, are they real? Are they not real? We're not going to talk about that tonight. Here comes a ghost. We're dead. For they all saw him. Okay, 12. And were troubled. The men that walked and talked and lived with Jesus. And immediately he talked with them and said to them, Be of good cheer, cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And he went up unto them in the, to the ship, and the wind ceased, and they were sore amazed in themselves beyond measure, and wondered. And he said, What about Peter? We're not talking about Peter and Mark. 
We're looking at the servant, Jesus Christ, and nothing but Jesus Christ in his life. He walked on the sea, and, and with Mark, no one else walked on the sea but Jesus. And again, other, the other Gospels will record Peter. We're not looking at anybody else. We're looking at what Jesus done. We're looking at the private times that Jesus prayed. He went up unto the ship, and the wind ceased, and they were sore amazed in themselves beyond measure and wondered. And with Matthew, what we read so far, we immediately the storm stopped. And any fisherman knows that it don't stop like that. For they considered not the miracle of the loaves, for their heart was hardened. That's the problem. That's why they didn't get it. That's why they weren't waiting for him the three days and three nights later. Their heart was hard. Now, consider the miracle of the loaves. Again, another another gospel record. Well, we don't have any food. And then when Jesus said, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Well, he's speaking because we didn't have any food. We didn't bring any loaves. Why didn't that come up? Because we're not talking about the Pharisees. We're talking about Jesus. And Mark is taking this time, the miracle of the loaves, the feeding of the 5,000 was a miracle after this miracle of walking on, this, on the sea and this miracle that the storm calmed itself down. And when they had Passover, they came over to the land of Gesserit and drew to the shore. And when they were come out of the ship, Straightway, they knew him. All right. And the disciples are not going to get a break anymore. And ran though the whole region about. Now watch this. They began to carry about beds of those that were sick when, where they heard he was. And whatsoever he entered into a village, cities, or country. <laughs> They laid the sick in the streets and besought him that he might touch if it were but the border of his garment. Well, where did they hear that from? That's a woman a few chapters ago with the blood of 12 years. He just came up, touched behind his garment. That has spread around. Hey, if I could do the same thing she did. I don't have to interrupt Jesus. Just touch his garment. And as many as touch him, were made whole. So, when you look at the other side, when you hear about John the Baptist has been killed, he says, let's go off to a desert place, let us rest. There has been no rest. So, what do you take the church age? It's not the time to be laying on the couch. It's not time to be, it's work. After work, after work, and our rest is when we get home to glory. He's taking care of these people, his people, the nation of Israel. The people. But notice how and we'll hear about a young rich ruler. But notice how no one's come up to Jesus. What must I do to go to kingdom? What must I do to be right with the, with the Father? Now, there are things that John says that have not been recorded, but all we see here is the healing. The people are coming to Jesus for something. How many of these people are going to go to hell? Yeah, you may have got your sight. You may have got feeling in your hand. You may have got hearing. But did you die and go to hell with Jesus helping you? You can go to the doctor, you can be healed and still go to hell. There is no work of the kingdom, there is no work of salvation. And there are many people, they will go to church because their boyfriend or girlfriend goes to church. I can meet prospects for my business at church. I can get people to pray for my ailment in church. I can have somebody do my funeral. I can have somebody do my wedding. I can have. 
Look at me, I'm a good duper. I go to church. Jesus must be pleased. They're coming to Jesus for everything. But they're not coming to Jesus for salvation. There's a big difference. And if you think that in your local church, everybody is saved, everybody's going to heaven, you've been deceived. And some people, if you, as I said, some people, some, even your own pastor may not go to heaven. And then there are some churches where the people are hurting like they are here. And yet what we read before, Jesus said they're like sheep without a shepherd. They're not taken care of. They're stranded. Because we're in the realm of, let's get, invite everybody to church, invite everybody to church. Well, what about those who are in the church, those who are members of a church, and they're hurting? And then what would Jesus do? He would visit, I mean, I know some pastors wouldn't even go visit their church members in the hospital. I had one pastor, well, we're gonna, I'm going to have this guy come and visit, because, you know, just going to church is too far. Well, you're here in Florida. You go to Georgia for your pastoral meetings. You can't come one-tenth of what that distance is for somebody in the hospital. You're troubled by that? What would Jesus do? He visited sick. Now, I know because I know things are tough. Or in the 2023, and I know a lot of hospitals won't let you in anymore. The, the one over here that's right behind us, you have to be, for religious, you have to have that person in that hospital bed invite you, have you to come. If they didn't invite you, they, they, they didn't put it on their records, you can't go in there and witness, you can't go in there and pray unless you make arrangements with the hospital. And, you know, poke your head, you know, like, you know, if I don't offend you, I'd like to come in, just talk to you a little bit, have a little prayer time. But that's even harder some of the, some of the, uh, I was going to say prisons, some of the hospitals. But in the ministry, realize many people are going to come to you. They have an ulterior motive to God. And how many people that did get healed and you never heard of them anymore? You didn't see them anymore. God did what was more important in their life. They moved on with their life until something else happened. And I've seen that. I've seen, I don't know if it's hundreds or thousands of different ways why somebody comes to church. Why somebody doesn't come to church. But I also know that not everybody's going to heaven. Not everybody in church is saved. Not everybody in church has a proper motive of being there. And it's sad.